Yeah. Uh, joining us now to share her insight, Dr. Colleen Kelly, Associate Professor, Emory University Department of Medicine. Good morning to you, Dr. Kelly. Glad to have you here. So, good morning. Um, good morning. I wanted to ask you about the schools, first of all, and, and this new guidance from the CDC with the distancing from six feet to three feet. Um, it sounds like great progress, but some of the teachers' unions are having a hard time with it. We have a, a statement here from Becky Pringle, who's the president of the National Education Associate uh, Association, which is the largest, one of the largest unions, uh, teachers' unions in the U.S. She says, we're concerned the CDC has changed one of the basic rules for how to ensure school safety without demonstrating certainty that the change is justified by the science. Do you see science Dr. Uh, Dr. Kelly, that backs up what the CDC is, is the guidance that they've now modified. Yes, absolutely. The CDC has um, assessed a multitude of evidence from many different sources that really when they looked at the difference between distancing between six feet and three feet in schools did not make a substantial impact on increased rates of transmission. The most important thing is masking in schools uh, and maintaining some level of distance. The WHO and now CDC recommend around three feet. Now, when transmission rates are really high, and particularly in the older student classrooms like middle school and high school, um, those may be places where uh, additional distance might be a good idea. But let's also not forget all of the data to this date was prior to vaccinations being rolled out. And now in almost all places in the U.S., teachers and school staff are being offered vaccinations. That is the ultimate level of protection that our schools really need uh, to open safely. And we've gotten there. And so really, this is all good news. Uh, and it is time to get those kids back into school and follow the mitigation uh, that CDC is recommending, which is including masking all the time and at least three feet of distance. Yeah. Now, doctor, another sign that things are starting to return to normal is that movie theaters are going to start opening up again. Uh, next Friday, AMC will open up nearly all of their theaters. Masks will be required for everyone. But AMC says this, quote, all guests are required to wear a mask at all times before, during and after the movie, unless actively enjoying food or drinks in the auditorium. Now, if you're required to wear a mask, but you can take it off to eat, what's stopping the entire theater from just eating the whole time? I think that's a really good point. And I think uh, from back when we all used to go to the movie theater, eating and drinking was a very important part of how we enjoyed the movie. So I am a little bit concerned um, that uh, if you're allowed to take off your mask to eat and drink, and everyone's doing that, that we could see transmissions and outbreaks in that sort of a setting. So uh, we'll have to see uh, what happens. Um, if, if there's low capacity, if there's distancing, if people do do a good job with masking. But I do think taking masks off to eat indoors uh, is concerning. Real quickly, uh, we're seeing alarming rise in cases in Europe and some shutdowns again in, in parts of Europe with a fear of a third surge. How strong is your fear of something like that happening in the U.S.? I think it's certainly a possibility. We are seeing kind of a leveling out of cases across the U.S. and even some small increases in uh, some places. This could be due to variant spread. Um, the variant that's more transmissible that originated in the U.K. is now here and very prevalent in the U.S. And we're watching very closely to see if that's what's happening. But once again, we are in a race against time. If we can get enough people vaccinated uh, before the variants take hold, before these increases in uh, cases take off, we may be able to avoid another surge. In addition, uh, if we have done a good job vaccinating our most vulnerable folks, there are people that are at most risk of severe disease, hospitalization, and death, even with an increase in cases, we may not see the tragedy that we've experienced over the last year. So the message is still vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate as fast as we possibly can. Dr. Colleen Kelly, thanks for spending part of your Saturday with us. Thank you very much. Have a Thank great you. Time. Of course.